Welcome to another episode of You Can't Make This Shit Up. Your host, David Washington, Joel Hoxley, and we are at the Oxford in Altamont Springs. The Oxford is a sports pub and secret society. Food is great. If you're not out here, you're missing out because this is a fantastic place. Get a drink, get relaxed, and have a good time. And especially since the topics we talk about definitely are humorous enough to say, hey, this is something we should be talking at the Oxford over some food. Like Carrie Lake and 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 the the, the upcoming GOP uh, election uh, uh, debate, and it's going to get exciting because Donald Trump's thinking about not going. So that that's your top man saying, "I'm not going to go," and the RNC is begging him to go. And you got Chris Christie, who's upset because he really doesn't want to sign this. I will support whoever the nominee is. And if Donald Trump goes, he doesn't have to sign that thing. And I think that's the thing he doesn't want to do is sign anything that says I'll support anybody but myself. But with that said, Terry Lake, the presumptive vice presidential choice of Donald Trump says that Donald Trump shouldn't go to Fox because Fox, she should be, he should be on Newsmax because Newsmax is the actual place he should broadcast what his message is. Uh, what is she called? Uh, Fox, the globalist network. Yes, the globalist also, network. In, a, in regards to uh, DJT, uh, former President Trump not showing up for the debates. If in fact, if in fact, he's sticking to a story that the election was stolen, that he is still the president of these United States, then I agree. He shouldn't show up for the debate. Because why should he? He's the president of the United States. But realistically, <laughs> realistically, the man is polling against the other Republican nominees at like 50%. I wouldn't show up. As a matter of fact, instead of showing up for the debate, the Fox debate, I wouldn't instead go on Newsmax, like you said, or have one of my rallies the same time the same day as the debate and just run my show over there uh, if i was donald trump i would sit on newsmax and you know since i'm a name caller i'd be calling them out like calling them out i i will deep hey shrug. that's low that's a low energy that's the small I pecker would, that's the small that i mean as donald trump has done in the past it just deconstruct each candidate one by he can one, come. He can come out one. and say, "Yeah, that was a that was a shit show." And let me tell you what was wrong with it. <laughs> oh, this guy, he became governor because of my support. This guy made a commercial about me building the wall and how he was such a Trump supporter. Yeah, this woman worked for me. She did the work that I asked her to do. This guy, this guy. This guy, this guy, he could just go. Well, just like when he said, just like when he said, line. when when they get on my get on their knees and beg me for money, <laughs> it totally changes. Democrat the whole or Republican, thing. that that was the case. It doesn't you know, matter. Hillary Clinton, he he said that about her. I mean, he totally made people see the things that they think about politics. Right. He was the only one who was saying about politics. Right. Hey, I own that person. Whoa, that's like that's literal words. I owned that person because yeah. they needed my, you know, Mitt Romney needed my money. When he was running for president, he came to me. I told him he was weak and he probably wouldn't win. Right. We don't know if that was really said, but we do know that he had to go see Donald Trump to try exactly. to get money. This is funny. It's like he says the right things that get people to believe that he's right. But Chris Christie said something very, very profound. Okay. He's the only one that's anti-Trump, right? And he's telling the other candidates they should be anti-Trump also because there's plenty of anti there. But this is a guy that has his own vendetta against him. But when he says, when he says the things like he goes out there and he's like, oh, you know, he, he's done this, he's done that. He's, they're, not, they're not doing enough. It's kind of crazy because – he has to sign this this loyalty oath. Mm -hmm. is, he, is he just, where is he going to sign? Is he going to sign it? Because he would say he has to support Donald Trump. 
Well, you know, the, as far as loyalty oaths, they're as good as the person who signs them. And if I was Donald Trump, if I was his campaign team with all the other issues, legal issues that he has with the indictments and so forth and so on, I would not give my opponents the opportunity to say not one word to my face on a debate stage. Instead, again, I will either have a rally the same time and date or appear on Newsmax and just, you know, have a live reaction and just deconstruct the arguments that they will have for being the, pre, the for being the Republican uh, nomination for president. You should do a you should do it on Truth Network too. So plenty of people that yeah, sure. That's the thing. Donald Trump only only goes towards one audience. It's the same audience. You can only go to the same audience. But there's so many a very times. loyal on it, uh, uh, audience, a very uh, a, a very devoted audience. Oh, I know, but that I'm shows saying, up. You only if you're gonna only you're only gonna go to those people. That who's that next person in line? I think that if if Republicans were smart at this moment, they would take. And Donald Trump out of the equation for just a moment, right? Okay. And think, which one of these people, if Donald Trump were to die tomorrow, would I want in the office? And look at those candidates that have stood up to him and, and, and done these different things. Who is that candidate? And then go back to being your Donald Trump, you know, lover and everything else. But at some point, you have to take him out of the equation. Like sure. you in the Democratic Party need to take Biden out of the equation. If he dies during this election process, right. Kamala is going to be expected to go to the top of the ticket. But guess what? She may start to lose to Kennedy, who's in the race right now. So sure. this is a, hey, I'm just in the race to be in the race just in case. Because right. these are old, these are old candidates. I believe DeSantis is the one of the top tier second tier candidates um Chris he doesn't resonate but he doesn't resonate outside the state of florida exactly so look at the vice president of the united states it pence doesn't have the forty thousand uh small donors mm -hmm. so he's pretty sure he's going to get there but he won't be on the stage You'll have Christie on. You have Christie that qualifies. You have uh, Scott. You have uh, Nikki. You have uh, hey Victor. Vi, Vi, oh God, I always forget his name. Uh, Vivek. Vivek. Um, he's. I like. Listen, I love his online presence. I just. Sure. He's so fun to watch. And I would say, like, I can't wait till we do this debate because I think. He's going to be a standout. I sure. think. I, I think that Nikki is going to be that voice that you can't avoid listening to because she stood up to Donald Trump. So right. how's that going to play into it? Nobody's going to want to hear from Christie. They're just going to say he's just a disgruntled fat man who was on the beach like a beached whale. I mean, they're going to they're going to literally really tear him up. Better. Republicans are, are laughing at him. Right. And and. The vice president, as much as I think he'd be a great president, sure. he, he will not because they wanted to hang him. Sure. Uh, you, you can't change a leopard's you can't change a leopard's spots. You can't change a tiger's stripes. It, it, these these diehards, like you said, 50 percent, over 50 percent are tied to one candidate. They can't see anything different. Yes. So. Yes, over 50. They are tied to DJT. And I think it'll live forever, right? But I, I just want people to realize that if he were to pass away, God forbid, what are we going to do? Are we going to crawl into our own butthole and, and not vote for somebody? Or are we going to say, well, I was only, I'll put DeSantis in there because he's supposed to be the heir apparent, right? I, I don't know who I'm voting for. I still don't know who I'm voting for because I am. Going into this with an open mind. I want to hear this debate. I want to hear it. And I want Donald Trump to be there. It will probably be a debate that will have low ratings um, because Trump is not part of that debate if, if he decides not to be there. 
Uh, it's unfortunate for the Republican Party. It'll say a lot for the Republicans. Uh, and they'll just seal the deal for Trump as a presumptive nominee. Well, my earlier, my, my earlier, you know, comment where I didn't get out my comment and you noticed, I just kind of went around it. Christie made a good point when he said, Donald Trump hasn't won anything since 2020, uh, since 2016. He okay. really hasn't won anything. Okay, sure. So, so if you point out the Mr. Winner is keeps on losing. I mean, he's on his third indictment. Sure. I mean, yeah, the world is after you. The world is after you. Sure. But show us some victories, right? Show us what those victories were. Well, D Trump can turn around and say, well, look at your Supreme Court. Look at the decisions that they've made in this most recent session. But did he look make the... the wait, 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 wait. wait. Let, let, let's look at the tax cuts. Let's look at your, your bank accounts, Republicans. Let's look at the deregulation that put a halt to a lot of the stuff that the Republicans cared about. He can look at those three things and say, "Nobody's going to say his my success. That's nobody, my legacy." I know, but nobody's going to say his presidency. And the, and the election was, was stolen. Nobody's going to say that his presidency was a failure in the Republican Party. Okay, because he stayed to. He did a lot of things that Republicans really appreciate. Oh, yes. He yes, stuck he to did. his guns, but those decisions. Just, just to kind of back off for just a moment. None of those decisions were his. He decided to tell the people he's not a liar. I could tell you when he says, I'm going to put these Supreme Court justices on the choices are going to come from this list. Never wavered. Right. Okay. So when he said something, he, he made a promise. He kept it. Okay. And when he promised that he wasn't going to lose, he kept that promise too, and now he's indicted for it. He said he wasn't ever going to lose. <laughs> he can. And he's still the president of the United States, right? <laughs> you you kind of, yeah, you kind of lost me there. I mean, he does. He keeps his promises. Yeah, he does. Yes, he does. That's true. That's very true. I'm not going to, and his presidency was good until COVID, until the Democrats decided to convince him by. Playing to his ego that he needed to shut the government down. The oh, Democrats yeah, and the masks. You know, he he never cut. He never fired Fauci. Right? As much as he talks shit about him, he never fired him. So, you you know, there's certain things you kind of look at Donald Trump and you go, kind of, if you were Spock, you'd have that one eyebrow go up because it's just yeah. weird. <laughs> right. Some of his decision, like you decided not to go after Hillary Clinton, and now. They're going after you because they didn't make such a promise. Exactly. You told us that you were going to put her in jail. No, we did. We convinced ourselves to lock her up. He never actually said it, but we convinced ourselves, lock her up, lock her up. But he came in and he said, you know what? I'm not going to sick the DOJ on her. Right. Okay. Maybe you should have. Maybe you should have gone after everybody. Maybe you should have gone after the, the Carter and really looked like a mean guy because Carter so old, right? But I, I don't know. I'm I'm sitting here kind of this is Carrie Lake is right. And I hate to say that because I think she's as crazy as she's as crazy <laughs> as they come. And I, you know, I love to watch her. I love to listen to her. She's excellent. She was probably a, a great, I probably would want to make sure I was on the news watching her right. when she was an anchor. She's that good. And I think she plays to Donald Trump. So the yes. fact yes, that she does. I never thought of it that way, that she's trying to make all this extra noise is because she needs to keep relevant. So Trump keeps her as that pick because so, you can't think of anybody else. Can you? I mean, there's been talk about Yunkin uh, and, and some other folks. I, I just can't see it. The, the GOP is so tied to Donald Trump that is, Trump. I think you know, it should be Rona McDonald. Rona Rona McDonald. Rona McDaniels. <laughs> I really do. She stuck around after he left. <laughs> She's still there. That's a very seldom does somebody keep their job after a, a loss. Sure. But, you know, Trump, again, if I was managing Trump, I would have him stay away from this debate. That's our new thing. Playing to the fact that 
hey, it's just it's just a formality that we're going through this nomination process. Focus on his legal issues and continue to focus on the um, the, prim- the the first primary states. No, I listen. I, I, that's time for me to get serious right this moment, like really serious. Uh, and no, Donald Trump should go with the Republican mantra: Don't show up. Don't give them the time of day. Don't let them define you. And that's what's happening with the Republicans. They're not showing up for anything mm-hmm. any longer because they already say they're not going to give you the time of day. So you can spit all your venom. And Carlos Guillermo Smith lost to a person that didn't show up to anything. Yeah, that's, that's shitty. And, and Susan Placencia <laughs> beat him, beat him down. And we go to everything, David. David, we go to everything. Republican leaning and, and, and Democrat leaning. Yes. They didn't show she didn't show up to Nothing. anything. And she ran a really good campaign. Yes. Donald Trump and the rest of the Republicans should say, We're not going to go to that noise. They're going to say the same thing over and over again. Over and over. And we're going to talk about issues. Yep. And we're going to talk directly to the people. And that's what they do. And all of a sudden you're going. What are they doing? Grassroots beating you now because we're not showing up. And we're not right. showing up because we're not you you can tell your people anything you want to. Because you say the same thing. You always talk about us. Why don't you talk about yourself? If I'm not there and you still have to talk about yourself and you talk about me, that's a win. It's always a win. So that's that's my final word. I mean, yeah. don't show up. Don't give them a time to uh, to to um Define you. I agree. You know, that's the elephant in the room if he's not there. And if you, as, as, as one of the competing candidates, you can't just ignore the fact that he's not there. You have to say something. You have to address it. You, you, what's your game plan? Are you going to attack him? Are you not going to attack him? What, what, it, it keeps them in a sense of uncertainty. You've all signed. Advantage Trump. Yeah, I'm sorry, my last word, but to just kind of go on that, you, you're right, because you 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 can't support it. You have to sign a document that says you're going to support the nominee. So they're going to ask you if Donald Trump is elected, the nominee, will you support him? Because you signed this oath. It's going to be asked. Again, I'm sorry about that, but the, that that was my final word. Well, fun times to be a Republican. Entertaining. The twenty eighth is or twenty. The twenty third is the GOP um, presidential nominee debate. I'm expecting the former president not to be there. We'll be doing a live reaction to the debate. Hopefully, if uh, if he's not there, we can make it a little bit more fun. And if he's not there, let's make sure we get him on the other camera because he'd be doing something. Oh, definitely. Definitely. So if you like what David has to say, then you subscribe. If you like what I have to say, then you like. <laughs> <laughs> like, share. Just get the word out there. We're out.